What's up guys? My name is Jeff. I'm the owner of RDR Gear here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And today I got a cool new gun. This is a personal pistol I recently purchased. This is the VP9 Tactical Optics Ready. So I'll give you a little history of how much I love this gun. This is my original VP9 back from 2014. This is the first striker fired gun that HK came out with after the P7M13. So this is my personal gun. This is an original paddle bag release, 17 round magazines. Actually, there's a 10 in it, well, I don't know why, but um, this gun has been through hell and back. And I always reference it because I'm not the best on maintenance. And you can see that's pretty nasty inside there. But the cool thing about how well HK products are made is because of this right here. You'll see the frame is broken. It broke. A buddy of mine I lent it to, and unfortunately he was going down the stairs in a shoot house and the gun fell and he stepped on it and I think this thing, it cracked. That was back in 2015 that this happened. So these are the first rounds out of this gun, other than me zeroing it last night. Um, so again, we're gonna run this thing through its paces. This one was unfortunately through my distributor, was a California gun. Um, so I did have some 10 rounders, but I pulled all my old 15 round magazines from my original VP9. We're going to use those today. So, all right, let's get on it. Eyes and ears. All right. In case you guys wondering, this is one of our modified Safari Land holsters for the VP9. Um, there were some comments on the YouTube that this couldn't work or something of that nature. I haven't quite seen them yet. Somebody had mentioned to me that there were some comments that Either there's some misinformation or some misunderstanding, but the bottom line is you'll see how the holster works today. All right, let's shoot this little guy right here. So I love this trigger, man. I own a lot of striker fired guns. I probably should dabble into some double action, single action guns, but man, I just, that, that striker fire is just phenomenal. It's a little low, but... Awesome. Super stoked on this thing. I, I have a standard barrel and a threaded barrel. I'll probably swap out the threaded barrel. I'm not a big fan of threaded barrels because my bad luck, I end up losing thread protectors and then the barrels get dinged and it's just an like expensive mistake. So I'll swap the barrels out most likely, but phenomenal. Let's check our camera, make sure that little frag didn't kill our camera downrange, and we'll be back. All right, good news, camera survived, it was fine. So I'm gonna give you my final thoughts and some details on this pistol, back at the studio. This is probably, I know that I, I'm a big striker fired gun guy, right? I don't really own anything double action, single action. It's either striker fired or single action. That's kind of two guns I own. This probably could rival as the best striker fired pistol on the market. Not just so much on trigger, but ergonomics, features, etc. cetera. Um, I love the VP9 so much that I'm gonna show you my original. So in 2014, the VP9 dropped. This was the first striker fired handgun that HK had launched since the launch of the HK P7M13 that launched in 1972. So there was quite a huge huge, huge, huge gap in striker fired pistol from HK. When the VP9 launched, this thing was a frozen rope laser beam out the box. This thing was amazing. People will say, oh, paddle these sucks. It does not. It just takes a little bit of skill to figure out how to use it with thumb and or index finger either way. You don't need the button. I do understand that the new guns, there are a small amount of VP9s are in the market. With the button release, I have not seen them yet, nor do I really care because at the end of the day, the paddle does not affect me whatsoever. This gun here, I had, this was probably one of the first that hit the shelves here in Utah. I paid full retail for this gun back in 2014. And the only thing I've ever hated about the VP9 when it first came out was the sloped Novak style and the painted glow in the dark paint thing they put in these dots. That was, and I just never changed it 
whatever reason was. But this is a phenomenal pistol. This pistol is so well built and shoots so well still, even though I have this very cool feature on my frame. It is for people with fat fingers. All right, no, I'm kidding. Um, this frame <laughs> cracked right underneath your trigger right here. Um, a buddy of mine, I let borrow it, and he was at a class or something there, the structure class, and somehow, I don't know what the hell holster he was using, whatever, but the gun fell. It went down, he went to get it, and he actually stepped on it, and it cracked that trigger guard. I've just been running super glue in trigger guard the whole time. I did contact HK a couple times, and we were going back and forth, and it, I didn't really have any issues with the pistol, so I just left it alone. So that is my little history on the original VP9 that I own. And now we fast forward to the new baby. So I'm not a big threaded barrel fan. Um, and reason for that is that I have a notorious habit of loose, like this one's already loose. And this was just from shooting today. These little guys, if you don't own a threaded barrel pistol, the thread protector is there for a reason. Your suppressor goes on to the handgun. These little guys protect your threads, but if you lose this guy right here, they're very difficult to find a replacement for. And hence, your fancy, very, very expensive threaded barrel is now exposed. And if you do ding one of these threads, it's shot to shit, it's done. Because you're not gonna be able to cross thread your suppressor through that dented thread on the barrel. So what I normally do is on these, I just, since I have this gun and I have another backup barrel and I have a spare barrel, I will most likely just swap barrels and run this gun as a dedicated non-threaded barrel pistol and I'll put the threaded barrel onto this one and call it a day. So let's go over this pistol here. One right off the bat that I really, really like is the new suppressor height sights that come with the gun. The suppressor height sights, it's a blacked out rear with a tritium high-vis front and it is suppressor height sight, so therefore you have a true co-witness on the gun. It works great, it's very easy to pick up and that front sight is very, very bright. Um, that is phenomenal because this was not the style of sight that was used in the past, it was a basically a taller sloped type sight. So again, having the suppressor height sight, a very wide rear notch to catch that front sight, phenomenal there. I'm using the RMR from Chichicon. Uh, this is a 3.25 MOA dot uh, adjustable and the CNH Precision plate for the VP9. This plate mounting is very, very cool and unique is basically it mounts from underneath. So the two T posts go up from the plate, the two screws go down, it pinches down on the plate and then the screws go into the gun. Phenomenal design, very, very rigid, very sturdy. The gun is full ambi for anybody who is a lefty. So if you guys are out there, you have slide stop on both sides, powder release on both sides, and the ergonomics of the frame itself. You have your replaceable back straps, so you can get big, small, etc. This one, unfortunately, was a California gun, so it did come in 10-round magazines, but I do have a buttload of magazines for this gun, so we're just putting our 17-round magazines in this pistol now, and that is it just fits the hand so well and points so well. Um, when we shot it today was the first rounds through the gun outside of zeroing the pistol. It just shoots very well. One thing I did not know uh, prior going to this review was that through HK's web shop, you now have a lot of options in regards to buying parts for your HK. I did not know that if I had worked on, as this was this DIY stipple from me to keep it from slipping out of my hand. For I, I used to shoot this guy gun at an IDPA. I could have simply just went and bought the top end and I'd have to buy a whole new gun. But here nor there, it's glad, I'm glad I have both. But you guys can get, if you have a standard VP9, you don't wanna get it cut, you wanna get Cuba Factory or whatever case may be. There are many companies who cut VP9s. It's not cheap, it's quite expensive because I guess there's something within the gun they gotta do. Um, I've had some VP9s that were red dot cut aftermarket. I got rid of those and kept this one, but you can go out and get top ends for your existing VP9 that you have now. So that was something I learned recently through the HK web shop that you can get those options there. So again, overall, this is a striker fired trigger, um, super clean reset. Um, 
a very fast shooting gun. Front cocking serrations, semi stippled frame. It's a little slick, but not too crazy. Other than that, I really don't have anything else to say, but the gun is badass. I'm super stoked to get this thing. I've been wanting one for a while. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And I have, we haven't seen very many Optics Ready VP9s since the release of the Optics Ready VP9. And one of my distributors happened to have one. So he sent me an email and of course I said yes. And this thing is phenomenal. This will be definitely, you'll see more of this as my kind of primary range pistol. I enjoy shooting this gun quite a bit. I'm gonna add this into the rotation for a red dot pistol use and kind of see where uh, it shakes loose in regards to striker fired setup. Even though I do have the striker fired, I did mention I don't have any other, I kind of lied when I said I don't have any other double single guns. I did get that new SIG Tac Ops. So that one, I'm probably gonna keep as an irons gun for now, because it is an original Tac Ops pistol. But I also have a Langdon LTT Beretta that I'm probably going to send off and get that cut for a dot. And that will be something that will go into my rotation as well. But that's really not a double single pistol because it shoots so well and it's so clean that I don't really consider that a traditional double action pistol. So other than that, that is the overall breakdown of the new VP9 Tactical optics ready. If you don't have one of these, man, if you've never shot one, I highly recommend hit your local gun shop. I'm sure there's one in a rental case. Um, these things are phenomenal to shoot for a striker fired pistol. It's definitely something that you should give yourself a chance to shoot, especially if you're in the market for a new gun or in the market for a full size handgun and you are on that striker fired market. This is definitely worthwhile looking at. So thanks for watching guys. As always, we post two to three videos every week. So please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, take care.